Hey guys, it's Brandon here again for another video. Now this video I'm going to be talking again about magic mushrooms and mental illness or bipolar disorder. And uh, this is going to be different than my other videos because previously I had talked about the positive sides of kind of using this substance. Uh, I always uh, gave the warning, you know, be careful, don't try this unless you've done a lot of research and you're sure it's something that's right for you, uh, especially if you have a diagnosed mental health condition. And I have now had another manic episode and um, a lot of people right now, uh, from what I've been told, what my doctor who prescribes my meds and everything has told me, a lot of people at this time of year are having manic episodes. Um, and I'm going to be breaking down one of the main causes of manic episodes or also, uh, and I'm going to be describing one of the main facets of manic episodes, which is the spiritual side, um, where people feel like they are part of God or something similar to that, or that they are Jesus or some type of prophet or they're divine. I'm going to be describing that in this video. Sorry, my cat was jumping all over the place, so I had to restart. But anyway, so talking about the kind of dark side or the dangers of using psychedelics when you have specifically bipolar disorder. Uh, like I've said in previous videos, I've been diagnosed with bipolar disorder type 1, and that is kind of the more severe side of bipolar disorder. Although it's not typically as severe as schizoaffective disorder or schizophrenia or things like that. So, Anyway, bipolar disorder is a very serious disorder. Uh, if you're watching this, I take that either you probably know someone with it, uh, have a mental illness yourself, or have bipolar disorder. Um, but anyway, let's get on to the video. So, what is the main problem with uh, modern day psychiatry and their understanding of how uh, psychedelics interact? Uh, I think one of the main problems is it is main uh, like modern day psychiatry is seeing it in a very narrow frame of mind. Uh, they see that medications and therapy are basically the the only ways to really kind of deal with the the worst symptoms. And uh, lately, I've been running into people uh, who are dealing with these symptoms in different ways. Uh, who have been diagnosed with similar conditions. Um, but this video isn't about how to, you know, cure your disorder or something. Um, although I do really think that psilocybin has greatly helped me with my depression. It has done that because it's it's given me the ability to see past the ego, your limited notion of self, and see that, you know, there actually is something divine about this life. There is something, I mean, divine is one word you can use, spiritual is one word you can use, you could talk about enlightenment and, and many other words. There are so many words to describe God or, or that connection to something else that is higher or you know greater than the, what we previously in our lives probably thought was just a, a boring human existence. But what happens when you take a psychedelic? They're, they're starting to do brain scans and they're finding that there's a default mode network in our brain and it is like kind of in the center of the brain and uh, from what I've seen that's kind of what the ego is. It, your default mode network are, is a network of the neurons that fire the most um, and basically that creates your whole kind of experience as a human being and your notion of self. Now, uh, scientists haven't really completely proven that consciousness comes from the brain. Uh, you can look this up. This is known as the hard problem of consciousness. Um, but we're going to do the scientists a favor and we're going to uh, believe on blind faith a little bit here and uh, just assume that consciousness and the brain are thoroughly interconnected. It does seem like they'd have a strong connection in the human experience of consciousness. But anyway, I'm, I'm using words like consciousness. I realize people kind of get lost here. 
When I'm talking about ego, I'm just talking about kind of your, your basic survival needs. This is what you kind of see before you get to a spiritual uh, level of, of living or a spiritual level of consciousness or awareness. Um, and I really do think that, that there is, I, I've had direct experiences of this, uh, both through my manic episodes with bipolar disorder, psychedelics, through meditation. Uh, consciousness is not well understood by modern science, and uh, science usually lags uh, about you know, a few thousand years behind spirituality because science has to have very quantifiable data to support its claims. Whereas spirituality, if someone feels something and another person feels something, they can start to uh, theorize over what is happening. So, I mean, there, there are plenty of ways to reduce your ego, to get rid of this default mode network. And like I said, psychedelics are one way to do that. And I truly believe that this is where the spiritual experience in bipolar disorder comes from, is your brain is, is firing in a different way compared to normal. Uh, I think we all can agree on that. Your brain is, is acting different than normal. There are different neurons firing, different shits going on, when you're, especially when you're in a manic episode, especially when you're in a severe one with psychosis, which is basically a loss uh, of touch with reality, the reality that most people experience at least. Um, so this, this loss of your ego, this loss of that default mode network, um, you're starting to use different parts of your brain more often. And there's a saying in psychology, uh, neurons that like wire together, fire together, something like that. Basically, the idea is that when you start using certain connections in your brain, it strengthens them. And as you start to meditate or, you know, use psychedelics or do other spiritual practices, you could even just be, you know, praying to Jesus. Um, there's a certain aspect in spirituality of uh, kind of surrendering uh, your own personal ability and power and your ego uh, to something greater, whether that be a deity or some force of the universe or whatever you want to call it. There, Like I said, there are so many different names, but the, the key thing that is happening here is you're moving from self-focused existence to, in a way, other focused existence. And it doesn't mean you're necessarily going to start um, thinking of other people more or being kind, although that is something that has happened in my episodes uh, quite a bit sometimes. Um, what's really happening is you're coming into an experience that is telling you and teaching you that uh, there is ultimately just one thing, one thing in existence, and that is God, and that is you, and that is everyone else. This sounds like it doesn't make sense if you haven't experienced it directly. And uh, it's taken me probably about a six, five year journey uh, of just reading and listening to um, like long, long, uh, what most people would consider boring videos about consciousness, about spirituality, about personal development, uh, to really get to a place where I have a, a decent, basic understanding of what is happening. And uh, now I can see that basically what is happening when you take a psychedelic or even when you're in a severe psychotic or uh, yeah, psychotic uh, manic episode where you're experiencing hallucinations. Uh, what is happening is your brain is kind of going crazy. It's, it's firing all over the place and it's firing in, in new locations a little bit and it's changing your sense of self. Uh, ask yourself this if you're a bipolar person. Uh, did you seem changed a little bit after your first manic episode? Because I certainly did. I've felt like it has been a change for me every time. Now, I realize some people have very negative manic episodes. Mine have always been very positive. Um, but we can all agree like it changes something in us. And the more that these other neural pathways are strengthened by being used more often, uh, if you're doing this and, and you're starting to get to a higher level of consciousness uh, where you're realizing that the ego is ultimately an illusion, um, this idea that you're a limited human self is an illusion, when you start to realize that, uh, you may very well get to a place where you can no longer deny the truth that uh, 
there is only God, oneness, and self. And uh, you are just in a limited level of consciousness at the moment, uh, or I am, you know, I'm experiencing this as Brandon Rowe, but uh, there's much more to this, uh, this experience uh, of life than just Brandon Rowe. And this can be uh, heightened by uh, raising your level of consciousness. So, you know, I've, I've made videos about consciousness and stuff like that in the past, and I'll probably be making more. But uh, what I really want to just express in this video is psychedelics are opening up new pathways in the brain. These new pathways are changing your sense of self. Eventually, if you take them enough or if you have enough manic episodes, uh, you could very well begin to lose your ego in a sense and find the spiritual truth of existence that different wisdom traditions, religions, uh, and some of the greatest minds of history have all been trying to work to explain to uh, the rest of humanity who, you know, the, the normal Joe Schmo uh, that might be like working as a delivery driver or something, uh, or working in a McDonald's or working in a factory. They, they don't really think about these things, uh, so it takes some visionaries. Um, not gonna toot my own horn, but uh, I, I have seen some things and had some experiences that put me in a, a certain category where there aren't many people who have seen and done what I've done. Um, now I only have, you know, one like small area of expertise, you know, and like I said, the, the psychiatry, the, it is modern day psychiatry is very good at what it does. They really do help to control symptoms and I don't want to discourage anyone from taking their medication um, as prescribed or tell them that they need to start using psychedelics because I've noticed that uh, for people with bipolar disorder, we have a certain craving or ability to really get into the extremes. That's the nature of our illness. We have, you know, massive depression down here, massive mania up here, and then we have all this range in between, whereas a normal person is like functioning like in between here, like this is their depression at the worst, or maybe it's down here, but like, and this is their happiest at the at the best. But we have so much more range as people with bipolar disorder. That's that's just how we are. That's how we are genetically. That's how we are in our brains. That's how we are in our psychology. And it just it's hard to fight that. By the way, this is my new cat Chester. He is the one who is making all of these noises and in the background that I'm trying to avoid. So, while I hold Chester so he doesn't make more noises, uh, <laughs> I am going to be making more videos about these topics in the future. Uh, I have personally chosen to stop using psychedelics for uh, the meantime. I'm not sure how long it will be. I do believe that they can be a part of healing bipolar disorder, but it's only for people at a very certain stage in their development. and. Um, I would not suggest it. Uh, it is a very hardcore route to take uh, when it comes to dealing with uh, bipolar disorder. And you need to have uh, basically a very good understanding of enlightenment, uh, non-duality, uh, some really niche topics. Um, and you, I would recommend having meditation experience uh, at least on and off, like for you know a good six months plus before you know you really even should consider it if you have bipolar disorder. You're going to see things, you're going to feel things, you're going to run into traumas, um, and you're going to process traumas in a controlled psychosis. That's essentially what using a psychedelic is. Now, um, so. Now that I put my cat down, uh, I would just, yeah, I, I do not suggest that you guys do this. I recognize that I am kind of being a little bit of a pioneer in the way that I'm testing these things on myself, but I really do think that uh, one day uh, maybe people will appreciate it that uh, Brandon Rowe took the chance and with his own sanity tried to understand the connection between psychedelics and bipolar disorder. 
Uh, but for now, I have to uh, get back to my normal life. My manic episode that I went through uh, really kind of damaged certain things, and it really, um, but it also helped me to grow as a person in some really beautiful and amazing ways. And I wouldn't have given up the episode for anything or uh, having bipolar disorder. I would never give it up, to be honest. I think that it makes me um, just so much more interesting, and uh, I, I am thankful for being born with it now that I have gotten to a place where I've found a way to get past the depression. Now I have to master the mania as well. It's a very difficult thing to do. Um, there are many different treatments that are being tested right now. Um, they range from something as odd as fecal matter transplants. I'm not kidding. There are universities or, or uh, at least medical facilities somewhere. I forget uh, where it was, but there is uh, real research going on right now that is finding that there might be some deficiencies in the microbiome of bipolar disorder um, in their stomachs, essentially, in our stomachs. Like, there, there's a problem there. And they're taking poop from people who have normal psychology and injecting it into, I believe, the stomachs of people with bipolar disorder in order to introduce normal human um microbiome stomach bacteria into uh, the, the stomachs of people with this mental illness. Um, I do believe that sometime in the future there will begin some preliminary research on how bipolar disorder interacts with psychedelics and I will probably be one of the first guinea pigs to sign up for this because I do think that um, I am someone who has been blessed with a very certain set of uh, kind of traits and characteristics and experiences and knowledge to be able to go through one of these experiences and find value in it and also find healing in it. Um, it's not that easy for everyone else. So um, I'm excited for that. I'm excited for the possibility that uh, in the near future, maybe 10, 15 years, maybe, maybe even faster, um, some researcher out there might take the chance, take the leap. Uh, and uh, if someone does do that, uh, I want to be part of it. But anyway, uh, for now, this is going to be all for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. And I hope that you subscribe and uh, follow me in my future videos. Um, there's going to be a lot of good content coming. I'm upgrading my equipment. If you couldn't tell, I got a new camera, better lens. Um, my audio is better. Uh, YouTube is something I'm going to be doing for a long time. And I'm sure that in the future, um, I will have a decent following because I'm just going to keep chugging along and making content. I realize that my content has a lot of great value in it, but I do lack a certain level of um, kind of entertainment value. Uh, my videos are very philosophical, very theory based, and uh, it takes a certain person to want to tune into that very often. So uh, if you don't want to subscribe, I would uh, just ask that you please give me a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Uh, it does help me get the video out to other people. And uh, other than that, I will see you guys in another video. Thank you so much for watching.